All right, guys, I'm going to talk about putting it all together. All right, so the very first thing that we talked about was the nephron, the functional unit. You have your renal corpuscle, which includes the glomerulus and the capsule, glomerular capsule, the renal tubules, your proximal convoluted tubule, descending loop of Henle, ascending limb of loop of Henle, and proximal convoluted tubule. So the very first thing that we talked about is here, which is glomerular filtration. So we had hydrostatic pressure, which is gonna push fluid out of the glomerulus. We had our blood colloid osmotic pressure, which is gonna use albumin which is gonna pull it back in, and then the pressure that hits the capsule and forces it back in is called capsular hydrostatic pressure. And this is going to push the fluid back into the glomerulus, and so it goes in. Now, we call all of these glomerular filtration when you take all of these and you add them together, this is gonna be your filtrate. Glomerular filtration is three pressures. Hydrostatic pressure, blood colloid, osmotic, and capsular. And we just call that filtrate. So when we talk about filtrate, filtrate, is going out of the blood. Now, we talked about the proximal convoluted tubule. Your proximal convoluted tubule is going to be responsible for the majority of your reabsorption. Reabsorption basically pulls it back into the blood. Okay, as far as the loop of Henle goes, we learned that water is reabsorbed on the descending limb of loop of Henle. We also learned that after you have reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule, that the fluid inside in the nephron is isotonic. Now, as water is pulled out, you have basically this fluid in the nephron becoming hypertonic. And on this side, you're gonna reabsorb sodium chloride. That is gonna be part of the countercurrent multiplier. Every time your filtrate passes through the loop of Henle, this is gonna create four times the amount of concentration of sodium chloride inside of the medulla. So in the loop of Henle, when you talk about the um, hypertonic medulla, this would be the counter current multiplier The water is left inside, so in the distal convoluted tubule, we have hypertonic, hypotonic concentration. Now, when we say secretion, we're gonna get rid of waste. So filtrate is gonna happen right here. Reabsorption primarily is gonna occur in the proximal convoluted tubule. But when we talk about secretion, secretion is going from the blood into the tube. So when you take filtration or filtrate, reabsorption and secretion, whatever's left is gonna be urine. So, filtration, it's out of the blood and into the tube. 
reabsorption is from the tube into the blood. Secretion is from the blood into the tube. And when you take all three of these together, that is going to create your urine. Now, other thing, well, when we talk about secretion, things that we're going to secrete is going to include urea. Urea is going to be the breakdown of proteins. It's going to include uric acid. Uric acid is going to be the breakdown of nucleic acids. Ammonia, which is either NH4 or NH3, which is a waste product. We also are going to get rid of hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are acidic. So when we talk about secretion, we're going to get rid of waste products. Uric acid, urea, ammonia. Um, another thing is creatinine. Creatinine is another waste product that we need to get rid of. So these are all secreted into our urine. Now, urine includes filtrate. You have to take anything where you reabsorb, which goes back in, and secretion of waste products, which goes into your, basically into your urine. But secretion goes out of the blood into the urine, and that's how we create urine. Now, urine is going to pass from the distal convoluted tubule into the collecting duct. into the papillary duct. You can review your anatomy by watching the anatomy videos. The papillary duct goes into the minor calyx, which goes into the major calyx, which is gonna go into the renal pelvis. The renal pelvis empties into the ureter. The ureter empties into the urinary bladder. And to exit, it goes out the urethra. So we're gonna talk about urine analysis and everything. You definitely should review your anatomy. Um, I've mostly put everything together. I would say that the counter current multiplier, the different types of filtration and how hormones and everything basically have an effect on everything is probably the most complicated. So I'm going to use the PowerPoints for um, urine and renal clearance as, as well as urine analysis.